Good evening, folks. It's time for our Advent Christmas hymn sing, the first 15 minutes or so before service begins. Hymns between 331 and 393 from your pew hymnal. Any, any hymn from 331 through 393, as long as it's not in our service for tonight. 361, what is it? Yeah, I don't believe that's in the service tonight. We can do it. 361. This is All Request Live, hymns 331 through 393. You may select any of those in the Advent Christmas section. 388, as long as it's not in the service tonight, I don't think it is. Go tell it on the mountain. Here we go.
Next request, Jane. 386 we have not, and 366, which one is that? 386, that's what you want to do? Well, let's do it. 386. <laughs> All right, and we probably have time for one more for tonight. From 331 through 393. Patricia? 392?
Please stand. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. The Spirit and the church cry out. All those who await his appearance pray. The whole creation pleads. Rejoice, rejoice. Open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. We continue with our Advent Psalm for the evening, Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and be saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our hearts by singing Prepare the Way. with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way, even if they are fools. They shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our second reading is from James chapter 5, beginning at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also, be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an, as an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. The third reading is from Matthew 11, beginning at the second verse. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one 
who is to come, or shall, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We continue with the message hymn. us to thy glorious throne. The grace, the mercy, and the peace of God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, be and abide with each one of you. Amen. The words that I would like to focus on are the words of that first reading from Isaiah 35 that's already been read to you. I will not read it at this time all over again. So you have it in front of you, I hope. So or you've got a Bible. Anyway, whenever we talk in terms of our theme for Advent, we're talking in terms of the theme of unto us. And that's going to run from Sundays all the way even into our midweek services like tonight, our first midweek Advent service. Uh, tonight we're looking at something called perfection. And we're looking at perfection restored unto us, which implies that perfection was lost if it needs to be restored. And so that's what I'm going to be looking at tonight. As we look at Isaiah and under that theme of unto us, Isaiah in chapter 35 said beautiful words of restoration, a restoration of perfection. But prior to that, he talked about something special that would be the restorer of all things. In Isaiah 7, 14, he says, Therefore the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. And we know that prophecy being fulfilled all in Jesus. 
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, God with us. God with us of all things. God coming unto us, coming down here where we are, instead of trying to force us to try to ascend to a higher plane, whether it be meditation or anything else. But God came down to us, living among us, walking with us, and yet continues to come to us, surrounding us. He is below us, above us. He is even in our heart. Jesus came to earth as that human baby for the purpose of overcoming the power of sin and for procuring forgiveness of sins for each one of us as well as the whole world. And also restoring the perfection that was lost the perfection desired by the Father, the Creator. He came unto us to fulfill the salvation plan. Truly, He came unto us because He loves us. This theme of unto us gets personal because you can insert your name in there as well. Unto you. Perfection. That's something that is hard to understand. My parents had a lot of problems with understanding perfection. It took them four tries before perfection actually came. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> perfection is something that we just don't quite understand. We can talk about it. We can explain it something that without spot or blemish, something that it has nothing wrong with it, as one of the little children at noon today said, nothing wrong with it. That's what perfection is. But we have no comprehension of that. I don't think there is anything that we've ever experienced outside of, like my parents, of something being perfect. And it was their baby son. <sighs> what a privileged life I led in Orlando, and a perfect town for a perfect child. Whenever we talk in terms of perfection, we then also have to go back to when it was really perfect. When everything was in harmony with God, Adam and Eve, they were in perfect harmony with God. If anyone was created perfect, it was indeed Adam and Eve. In fact, they were created perfect in a perfect creation. They were perfect in their relationship with each other, with all the creation around them, and with their God as well. They walked and talked with him. But that perfection, sadly, came to an end. Whenever we talk in terms of perfection, it's kind of like everything being in harmony. Yes, speak, thy servant heareth. But when some things happened, perfection was lost through sin. You know the story very well. There in the Garden of Eden. It all started not in the garden, but it started in the regions of eternity. When Lucifer, one of the archangels of God, rebelled against God and led a bunch of other angels with him in rebellion against God and was cast out of heaven and cast down to earth. And we have that word in Revelation, woe to you inhabitants of earth, for he comes down with great wrath. He became a disruptor of the harmony and perfection, and he brought disharmony. Man, that just strikes me. That man is so talented. <laughs> now you can rest, okay? <laughs> That's what harmony and disharmony is all about. Disharmony was what he brought into the world. He came to destroy what God wanted for himself to be perfect. And he wanted it to be the delight of his creatures, his human creatures. He had already disrupted the heavenly places, and now he brings that disruption down into the garden. The old snake, the serpent, Lucifer, speaking to Eve and tempting her, and both she and Adam ate the forbidden fruit, and they knew at once that they had left the perfect 
situation. The perfect harmony that Adam and Eve had dis was disrupted. They hid from their loving creator. They blamed each other. Then they blamed the serpent. All creation erupted in disharmony all around them. Nothing was perfect anymore. Their bodies were now imperfect. They would now go into drudgery. And when it came to tending the garden, it would be by the sweat of their brow. Thistles and thorns would grow. They would ache with pain. They would get sick and even die. The old serpent just kept hissing his own way as he disrupted man and all of creation with sin, sickness, sorrow, sadness, separation. Their souls, now imperfect, were infected with sin. They felt separated from their creator, and they felt separated from each other as well. Creation also fell into this imper imperfection. As I said, thorns and thistles, erosion. There would be drought, there would be flood, there would be fires, there would be crops that would fail or eaten by insects. Animals would prey upon each other. Animals would know pain and suffering just like the human creatures would. Perfection was gone. Perfection was lost. Paradise indeed was lost to them. And it all appeared so hopeless and so pointless as far as living. But thanks be to God for his steadfast love. Instead of annihilating Adam and Eve over their sin, he had mercy upon them because he loved them. They were his special creatures. And he gave them a promise, and he, in that promise he gave them hope. Unto them would come a restorer, a rescuer, a redeemer. The offspring of the woman, the seed of the woman, would crush Satan's power, would restore all things to that perfect condition that God had intended it to be at the beginning. But he would have to do it by offering himself as the perfect sacrifice. And he did. Jesus went the way of the cross, offering himself as the perfect sacrifice to end all sacrifices, taking on himself imperfections of the world and nailing them to the cross that when he went down from the cross and raised again from the tomb, he had begun the working of restoration. Perfection restored unto us. That's what Jesus is all about. God is merciful and he is loving. Satan would not steal his perfect creation from him. He wouldn't let him. He would restore that perfect creation. It was not all lost. He would do it by sending unto us a Savior. This promise was reaffirmed by the prophets. You heard it in Isaiah when he said it would be a restoration taking place. Creation would be restored. He said, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like a crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. For waters break forth in the wilderness, streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. It's a restoration of Eden all over again. Paradise restored. Humans, too, would be restored, Isaiah said. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. He would bring joy where there was grief. He would say, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. And then he says those beautiful words about restoration. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The promise of all of this restoration was fulfilled in Jesus, the restorer, the redeemer 
by offering himself as that perfect sacrifice, he restored perfection. His redeeming work on Calvary and that empty tomb has prepared for us a way of holiness on which to walk. By grace, through faith in him, we have been forgiven of all of our sins. We are, have been called children of God. And you know, as children of God, even though you are a sinner, you're still declared perfect in the eyes of God. You know, Luther always talked in terms of simul justus et peccator. At the same time, I am a saint and I am a sinner. We struggle on this side of eternity as sinners. We struggle under the weight of imperfection. But my friends, before God, when he looks at us through the cross of Jesus Christ, as we are washed in the robe, our robes are washed in the blood of the Lamb, he sees us as perfect children of God. We have been declared perfect. Not that we act perfect, not that we think perfect, not that we are perfect, but because he has declared us perfect. We can truly say perfection has been restored unto us all through Jesus. And when he returns in glory, the completeness of that restoration work will be made known to us. The perfection will be complete. By grace through faith in him we have been declared in the eyes of God his perfect children and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy my friends that's the gift we have as we anticipate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ let us remember that he looks at us as perfect children of God he looks at us as children who have had their sins washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. He looks at us through the cross of Christ and he sees his beloved perfect children. In Jesus, let's rejoice with thanksgiving. Amen. Now may that peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's now join in singing our next hymn. This time we take the opportunity to worship our Lord by receiving our offerings.
As we gather for this holy supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us confess our sins to God our Heavenly Father, sincerely repenting of all guilt and begging him to grant us forgiveness for the sake of his son. We take a moment of silence to reflect and confess. Do you confess that you are a sinner by nature and by choice? If so, then answer, I do so confess. Do you admit that you have sinned in your actions, thoughts, and words? If so, then answer, I admit these sins. Are you truly sorry for your sins against God and against other people? If so, then answer, I am truly sorry. In light of your sincere confession, as one of your called servants of the word, I announce God's forgiving grace to you. By the command and authority of my Lord Jesus Christ and in his stead, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we look for the coming of Christ, may the Holy Spirit work his forgiveness in your heart to restore, renew, and refresh you as a forgiven and redeemed and perfected child of God. Amen. I invite you to stand for our communion liturgy. This evening we have a perfect meal coming to us, where somehow mysteriously veiled in earthly elements of bread and wine, Christ's true body and his true blood are here for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The Lord be with you. We pray. We give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, Heavenly Father, for you have had mercy on your creation by sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, all mankind fell too, but you desired to be with us, so you put a plan into action. You sent prophets, priests, and kings to appoint us to you, to prepare us for Christ's arrival, and to lead us in your paths of righteousness. You sent angels to make ready Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph. You sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And you send us your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to receive Jesus as Lord. So bless all who hear your word and receive your grace in the sacrament that we would be ready at the coming of Christ to receive him who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The gifts of God for the people of God come as there is room at the table.
Now may this holy eating and drinking of our Lord and Savior's true body and blood strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. This time, let us come before our Lord and his throne of grace with our prayers of intercession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, by the sending of your Son, Jesus, you kept your promise to a people long ago. We too thank you that Jesus became like us to save us from our sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Make us able to live each day waiting for Jesus to come again and to take us to himself in heaven. As we gather in preparation for the coming of Christ, we come before you with various cares and concerns which we offer up to you at this time. Hear us for our Savior's sake. We bring before you Bob Schatz, who is hospitalized uh, with a serious illness, with his diabetes and with falling, and we ask that you grant to him healing and strengthening each day, and we pray for Patricia Steffens as well, who underwent wrist surgery today. Let the healing be fulfilled for her. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for loving this sinful world and each one of us so much that you sent your beloved Son to save us from our sins. Jesus, the very Word of God, became flesh for us so that he might suffer and die as our substitute. In him, all your precious promises of salvation have been fulfilled. In him, we have a glimpse of your loving face, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your gift of salvation in him. During this Advent season, let your Holy Spirit mold us into a people prepared. Prepared to serve you with hearts focused on worship and spiritual growth. Prepared to serve other people in the name of Jesus through actions of love. Prepared to welcome Jesus when he suddenly and surprisingly comes in glory on the last day to take us into an eternity with him. We ask all these things, O Lord, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing and benediction. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. He shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. To God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in his holy church forever and ever. Amen. Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.